Guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about our range of sensors and the connectors that go on them, how to crimp them and get them done right the first time. Let's go. There is a really big range of sensors out there, manufacturers, styles, threads, connector counts. There's so many different things, but we're not gonna be able to cover them all today. But what we are gonna to cover today is this range of connectors that we have in our Haltech catalog. From pressure sensors, temperature sensors, map sensors, flex sensors, um, even a coil, just because the connector is part of the same family as a lot of the other style connectors that we have here. So we're not gonna go into other brands. Um, we can delve into that one day if there's enough demand for it. But today, let's stick to the GM style connectors and we'll show you how to get them done with our new push to seat connectors. First, let's start with the pressure sensor. This type of sensor is commonly used for fuel pressure or oil pressure maybe even a transmission type pressure or a coolant pressure or wastegate pressure and many, many more. Nitrous, brake, um, obviously the bigger 2000 PSI style sensors will be more useful for the nitrous and the brake, but same family, same connector. So very, very, very common. The first thing we want to do is put the rubber boot on because it's very, very difficult to put this rubber boot on once you've already crimped the connector on. So we're gonna make sure that we get those wires in, make sure they're all coming out and we can slide that further down and we can get ready for our rubber seals to go on. There is two ways that I've heard of people doing these. Um, they like to put the rubber seal on first and pull that down. Strip that little bit of insulation off We'll just twist those wires together so they don't fray. And then pull that seal up so that it's ready to go for your pin. I am usually not that prepared or I don't think ahead that far. I usually like to strip it first, then get my little rubber seal, thread it on and do it that way. Um, Definitely pros and cons with doing either technique there. Um, the pro for this style would probably be you get a much nicer finish um, and you don't fray any of those wires. Um, plenty of times if you don't twist those wires together then you put the rubber seal on, you actually get a nice bit of copper straight into the end of your finger and it hurts like a lot. Now we're ready to our pins. So we're going to put our bit of copper inside the front bit here and then the rubber insulation goes in the bigger wider U as it holds that rubber seal to keep it as waterproof as possible. As you can see we are working with very small and fiddly little bits of equipment here so it's going to take a bit of practice and it will you, you may not get it right the first time, but practice with this stuff definitely makes perfect. A bit like making per pancakes. The first one is often pretty terrible, but you get the hang of it, and then it just becomes very, very easy and straightforward. So what we want to do is use the small crimper to basically the smallest die on the crimp, which on this particular crimper is E. What we're going to try and do is just push down and crimp on that. You can see that every single strand of that wire has gone in. It's now pushing in on that wire. And what we want to do is make sure that when we do that crimp, we want to inspect it and make sure that those two tangs on that crimp have actually folded over, hit, and then pushed down in so that we've got a bit of a heart shaped when that heart shape occurs, it pushes down into that wire and secures it and makes a really, really nice tight crimp so that wire can't come out on its own. The next crimp we're gonna do is with the slightly open style uh, hole in our crimper, which is A. Uh, you can definitely use C as well if you like the nice tight crimp on the, um, on the rubber seal. But again, 
it's just going to be a technique thing and getting used to what you're used to. Um, all the seals are going to be different across a lot of different connectors. So you will find that when you're used to doing C on a lot of connectors and then you do C on just another connector that you're not used to, you won't get a nice result and you'll probably have to repin it. I would call this a really nice crimp. Um, what I probably was not focusing on when I was trying to angle this with the camera was keeping this pin as dead straight as possible. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but it has bananaed ever so slightly as I crimped it on the smaller, um, smaller tang on the pin, which has actually bananaed it ever so slightly. This amount of banana won't affect the pin going into the terminal, but on one of the Bosch ones I'm going to show you, something this small could have an effect on the, on the connector. This is our what we refer to our harness side. So this is where the pin goes in, and this is the harness side view. So in our pin out, we always label the harness side view. This is what we're talking about. It's this side. So when we look at our connector, we can see that there's a little tab there. That tab on the connector actually catches on that little hole or that gap in the connector, and that's what locks it in place. So we want to make sure that we get the pin the right way around. Otherwise, it's going to reject the pin going in if we get it upside down or we have it facing at three o'clock or nine o'clock. What we want to do is have that facing up and then we want to push it in. There shouldn't be a lot of resistance pushing this, um, this pin in. You probably didn't hear that, but there's the ever so slightest, faintest click when that pin went in and seated properly and that locking tab went snap. It just snaps gently down on top of that pin and locks it in place. Last but not least, we have our locking connector. So this goes over this entire connector and surface area here. And what it does is it actually stops all of those little tabs from pushing out and lifting and releasing that pin. So what we need to do is make sure the two on the top and the one at the bottom, so it all goes on the right orientation. Gently push it. You won't need to push it with giant amounts of force, but you can see that that has not quite seated yet. Done. That is now completely locked and those pins won't fall out of this connector on their own. In your beautifully and immaculately presented loom, you will probably already have a wire, wire covering uh, on this bit of wire, whether it be uh, some sort of oil proof tape or felt tape or some sleeve or some heat shrink sleeve. Um, basically that goes underneath this particular um, grommet or, um, or rubber boot insulation and then you will slide that insulation that boot all the way up and then we want to get a nice tight seal around that connector just to make it sort of waterproof weatherproof oil proof and keep all the contaminants out of that connector to keep it nice and clean and keep those electrical connections as good as they can be so we're going to line that tab up with the locking pin that it seals on you can hear that click. That's how you know you've got it done right because that tab falls down, that pin holds that connector in place. And now you've got a nice solid connection for your pressure sensor. Now, don't be too hasty in throwing this document away. It is always a good idea to keep this around and keep it handy just in case you haven't quite got this right or you had a moment or it was four o'clock in the morning and you decided that you just wanted to try and get your harness done. It is always good material to go back and make sure that you've got all these connections right. Leaving this boot off sometimes until you've made sure that everything's configured right in the ECU and is reading correctly in the ECU is another thing I like to do just to make sure I've got all the connections right. So it's always good to keep this, maybe even put it in the glove box. You never know when you might need it. Our air temp and coolant temp pins and connectors are exactly the same family as our pressure sensor, which we just did. The only difference is that these are two pin variants of that exact same family of connector. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing, crimp those pins with those seals, and then we'll slide them into these connectors. And then I'll show you how to use this little locking tab on the back.
Now that we've crimped these pins, we're gonna put them into the connector. Being an air temp or coolant temp pin or connector, it doesn't actually matter which side or what orientation we get these pins, which is quite lucky, so that's good. Just makes it easier and less thought. I bet you heard that click on that one, that was a cracker. Let's do the other side. Wait for the click. Yeah, beautiful. Now that we heard both of those click in, this connector that locks those two pins should go straight down, which it does. We have a fully sealed connector, which is crimped and ready to get the locking tab put on the back. This can often be a very, very tricky one if you've already heat shrunk all the way up to the back of these connectors because depending on where your heat shrink is at, can be very, very hard to get this connector in between these two wires. As you can see, when you get this locking uh, connector in place, what this does is it holds and pushes on the back of these seals and make sure the pin stays as far forward as possible so that it stays locked in here as much as possible. So you give it a good firm push, double click, one for each side. Um, that was actually quite a lot of resistance on that because it actually pushes really, really hard on those rubber seals to keep that connector and pin all mated together as much as possible. So a really, really, really firm connector, um, really, really firm connection here on these, um, on these pins. So this is a cracking connector. I really love this one. So we've done our temp connectors, which is for our coolant and our air temp, which have exactly the same pins. Uh, our flex connector actually has an identical pin as well. So it makes it really, really handy as you only need one style of pin to cover a big range of connectors. Our Bosch pressure and temp connector is a, definitely a unique connector to us. Um, we haven't had anything like this in our range before we had these sensors arrive on the catalog. Um, these are a five pin connector, but we only use four of the holes or the slots for this connector, which is why there's a blocking, pin, uh, uh, blocking grommet, I guess you'd call it, which actually goes in pin number one because that doesn't actually go anywhere in this connector, as you can see, because um, it's only got four pins. So we've got our four wires that we need for our sensor here. We've got our orange power supply, which is five volts. We have our black signal ground, which is a black with a white stripe. We've got our AVI, which is our signal wire. So this will be either our temp or pressure, but for this one, let's say this is our pressure. And then we've got another AVI, which we're gonna use for temperature. Strip back just a little bit of copper, as you can see. Try not to strip too much off the insulation off so that the copper sits in that little channel of that pin. Try not to stick too much of that wire up here because that is where the pin in this connector, um, that's where that pin should be seating. So you'll actually be pushing on the end of the wire, which is probably not desirable um, when that wire should be all the way back here. Just keep those two things separate. This pin contacts up here, this wire sits up this end. So try not to smash the two together, otherwise it will probably damage what's going on inside this receptacle, making it looser, which can create resistance, which can affect the signal. Twist the ends, put our rubber seal on first. Got that seated in nicely. We've got a nice amount of copper to crimp down to there. And we've got our rubber seal sitting exactly where it should be, right at the end of the insulation. So let's crimp the two of those together. E again for the smaller. Crimp that nice and hard. That should now be pushing down and pushing into that copper, like I mentioned before, with the heart shape. So heart shape is love, that's good. Your connector will love you for it. Your car will love you even more for it. And I like to use C on these red crimpers and you can see the seal ballooning at the bottom. But I find that when I crimp down as hard as I can on this connector, oh, sorry, on this pin, it actually goes into the connector a lot easier. Like I said, you'll find your, your way on how to do these yourself and you know, get your own groove. But this is how I find that it goes into the connector best. 
So what I want to do is make sure that number two is where I think it is. And I want to make sure that that connector is facing up and facing out of that connector. And it should ever be a nice, it should just go, it should glide in very, very nicely and you should hear the faintest click if we do it correctly. So I'll be quiet and we'll see if we can hear it. that's all of our pins terminated. Let's go back to the diagram and make sure that we're getting everything correctly on our diagram. Signal ground is number four, so let's do that one. Signal at the bottom, this one, I wanna make sure that, that the top of that pin is actually facing down. So I'm gonna push that into that connector there. Very tricky to show you sometimes, but yeah, as you can see, that's going into the bottom one, if I pull. That one out of the way. And again, that should be a nice, beautiful click as that glides in. That one's locked away. Then we can look at the next one, which is our five volt, which was orange. And that one goes into number three. So again, I've got the top of that open face of that pin facing down. Should be a nice click again. that one's ready to go and we'll get our temperature which is our last one which is five again facing down how good that is our pressure temp connector fully populated the last is our seal that I was talking about before we simply place the uh, knob in Use your nail or use a pick or whatever you've got around. You could even use the tip of the sensor if you want. Push that down. As you can see, that's nice and flush. All the other seals are doing their job and you've got a nice waterproof connector. Now we can slide that seal, uh, that locking tab across, as you can see. If you've done all those pins beautifully and they're absolutely perfect, all you need to do is hit that locking tab and that's it. If you have not crimped that, you will find a lot of resistance in pushing this across and it just won't go. It'll feel like it wants to, but it just won't click. That's how you know one of those pins isn't right. And that's when you would go back to that second connector that you've ordered and just try again until you can get that to slide across just like that. Last but not least, of course, we get the joy of plugging in that connector that we've just terminated. Oh, so good, sounds so good every single time. Uh, we don't need to do a lot in terms of locking this one in. Um, you can push that in, that's it. Now you can't press down on that particular connector so it won't accidentally release until you push pull that yellow locking pin out, then you can push down on that and you can see that it will now allow for that connector to be released. Another connector is our Bosch style EV1 connector. Um, super popular, you'll find this on a lot of factory injectors. Uh, you'll find this on a lot of European model engines like BM. I know the early BM used to use a lot of this style connector. Um, you'll find this very, very common injector. And we use it on our oil temp sensor. As per usual, we're gonna strip a little bit of the insulation off. Being careful not to damage the other one. Put our boot on. Um, realistically, I probably should have put the boot on first because as you'll see now, rookie error, you can often destroy these nicely made wires that you've just twisted together to keep nice and bundled. We've got our pin. 
Um, unlike all the other ones that we've done so far, these do not require a rubber seal on the back because this boot does the job of sealing it and keeping water and oil and fluids out of the back of this connector. Often start with the big one, just because of the style of this connector. It's actually a bit bigger with the uh, tangs on this connector. And then just give it one more pinch on a slightly smaller. You can see that that's got a nice little heart shape on it now. And then I go with the bigger and then just crimp down on there insulation on the back of that and that gives it a really nice tight seal and crimp on the wire and on the insulation to make sure that it's not going anywhere. Got that one in one go on the middle ones. So what's that? That's D. Again, do what you find comfortable and what works right for you. Make sure you don't banana that pin too much by using the wrong type of crimp because that can then put pressure on the pin and it can actually bend and contort the wrong way, which we don't want because the connector is all straight. So we want to try and keep everything as straight as possible. All right, beautiful. So we've got our two pins ready. Um, orientation on these, it will only let you put them in one way because as you can see, the connector has those pins orientated one way. So it won't be possible to put a connector and a pin facing that way because it won't let you push them on that way. It just doesn't work. So let's orientate them and put them in the connector. I have tried my best to see if I could get it on camera, but you can't see, but on the top and the bottom of these two crosses, there's actually a little uh, retaining clips which hold these two little locking tabs, which hopefully you can see in the video there, or picture there. Those two little locking tabs lock in place when we put that pin in. So you should hear the click of them springing into that little clip. I think we can say that that is all done. Slide that rubber boot. And that is an EV1 style connector. Terminated. Beautiful. Next we have our Deutsch connectors. I've said it before and I'll say it again and I'll say it forever. I love these connectors. They are so good because they're so versatile. They're so easy to use. Um, and they're very compact for what they are as well, which is great. So the DTM range, which is what we're working with here, is what's on the connector for our three bar or four bar map sensor, our Mosport map sensor. So that's what uses this connector. Nice click, look how compact it is um, in terms of packaging, as, com as opposed to our uh, other connector, which was for our uh, Bosch sensor. Um, quite a big, sensor and quite a big connector which can be quite bulky but as you can see the Deutsch stuff is very very compact and it is very versatile and easy to use um, great for beginners great for advanced users as with everything there is imitations out there and there is real um, I don't mind the imitation stuff it actually works quite well um, as opposed to the very early designs which were around and there's gonna be two different styles of pin that you will encounter. And I'm gonna do both of them today. And I'll show you how to do both of those so that they work really, really well with the right tools. First, we're gonna use our crimp style Deutsch pins. These are the female Deutsch pins, but unlike the barrel style, you can see that there's tangs on these that crimp down onto the insulation as opposed to the barrel. We're not gonna worry about the barrel for now. We'll do the map sensor one with the barrel pins soon. We're gonna focus on these ones. And just like every other one that we've done so far, it's insulation on the back and then the copper in the front. Get the insulation in. There's no rubber seal required for these ones because there is a rubber seal in the connector. I like to use the middle one then the small one and we use the 
biggest one, and then the middle one. That's just how I like to do that pin. I find it just doesn't deform it as much and just seems to crimp down on it nicely. We've got our two pins ready and crimped, ready for our connector, our Deutsch connector. Again, being a temperature sensor, we'll see in the paperwork later that we don't need to worry about orientation. So it can go this way, it can go this way. It doesn't matter which side of the sensor you've got, as long as you crimp it well and insulate it well, it will work properly. You might be able to see down there that pin is coming through. The only thing you ever need to monitor is as that pin goes in, that it doesn't shoot and then just go off to the side or it might just deviate where it shouldn't be. Just make sure it stays nice and straight and then you'll see it come all the way to the top. It will then, as you would have seen then, it would have found its way away from the connector and then as it got locked, it would have gone bing and gone straight and then straightened itself up ready for this locking wedge to go in place. What it does inside this connector, there's two little locking tabs that will flick out that you can very, very easily release, which you can see in our de-pinning video, which we'll put in the description. That de-pinning video shows you that there's two little locking tabs that you just need to flick out and then that pin simply comes straight out. Um, makes these very reusable as well if you ever need to recycle this connector. Locking tab goes in, holds those two locking tabs on top of the pin and forces them onto the pin to hold it in place. Done, how nice is that? So compact, so neat, so nice. Ready to plug into our temp sensor. That one's all done. I'll show you how to do the barrel pins on the map sensor. Pin simply slides over the top and should meet at the bottom, that pin should meet the top of the insulation. So that's how you know you've got exactly the right amount of copper. Again, this will come from experience. If you find that you've cut or stripped away a little bit too much, don't ever be afraid to use your cutters. And just cut that down ever so slightly, just give it a little haircut. You've got a nice straight flush surface for your pin to now slide over and butt up against at the end. As you can see, we're probably just right there. So that gives the wire enough flexibility. There's a very, very particular style of crimper which we sell on the Haltech web store. Um, this is exactly for this type of pin. You won't need this type of crimper for anything else other than the Deutsch pins. This particular crimper is made for this DTM pin. So I know that it fits. Once you put that pin in, it seats in. As you can see, the pin completely disappears and goes inside this barrel. And as we crimp down, it gets all the way to the end. I release it and then that pin comes out. Looking at the pin out for our particular uh, sensor, which is the map sensor. I can see that we need to put our five volt power in pin number three. I'm going to slide that in. You'll see that this pin pushes away as it rides over the locking tab and then the locking tab pushes that pin back down and into place. So there's pushing away and then as it locks in you can see it pushes it down ever so slightly. It's our signal ground our last pin, which is our signal pin. You can see that those pins actually, those teeth push down into that pin and crimp it down really, really tightly. Our three-way locking wedge goes in. Done. Our map sensor's done, so we can put that one to the side as well. And the last one I wanna show you is a pretty significant one for us, which is our IGN coil. Uh, that connector has now been updated as well. So previously this was a pull to seat connector and it was probably a little bit frustrating, but now that someone's gone and made these, um, this is a game changer. This makes it so much easier to wire these coils and just cars in general. So let's attack this and this will be our last range of connectors for today.
We've got our five wires for our five pin connector. Don't focus on the colors too much. The wiring diagram will tell you exactly what needs to go where uh, when we're using these particular grounds. Just for this instructional video, I've actually got the colors of three signal grounds. That is not what we are gonna use in the real world. We're gonna use our allocated pinout, which is in our sheet, which you can see is a ground reference a ground to the cylinder head and a ground to the battery. Whatever colors you need to use for that is up to you, but just make sure that those wires go to the right place. These pins, again, are exactly the same as the GM family. So this will be your flex fuel, your air temp, coolant temp, and your pressure sensor connector pin um, and seal. sliding the rubber seal on or sliding the rubber seal on earlier and then stripping, whatever works best for you. Gripping that seal. Now we're good to go with our ignition signal, which is on A. So you can see A there etched into the connector we want to make sure that that's facing up. I'll remove this locking tab so you can see these little locking pins that I'm talking about. Those little locking pins is what holds that seal in place, uh, the pin in place. So that locking tab slides into that little gap on top of the pin, and that's what keeps that in place. Very faint click but that's what holds that pin in, which is beautiful. So that's not going anywhere. So let's do the other four and we'll slide them all in place so that I can show you how this thing locks on. Got all five of our wires terminated now. Let's slide them into their appropriate slot on the connector. And again, if you've crimped these nicely, they should all go in. I rushed this one, and as you can see, it's bananaed ever so slightly. We just need to rectify that, which happens time to time. No one's perfect. We're just gonna straighten that pin up with a set of pliers, all the crimpers themselves. Just a small adjustment. Don't be too aggressive or harsh as it will snap that pin in half. And the last one. Click. All five of our wires are in, secured, and locked away at the top here. All we need to do is add in our locking connector at the top. And like I said, if they're all done nicely and all those little tabs at the top are pushing down into those pins, it should be very, very easy to lock that away, which as you can see, was effortless. Now that your pins are all locked away and you've got the tab on the top, it should be nice and easy just to plug this coil in. Beautiful. That latch went down on the top, which means it's locked away and then it can't accidentally come undone. To undo it, simply lift and pull. Hopefully this video has been helpful so that you can get an understanding of what's required to get these sensors and connectors done in a nice, timely, easy manner. Like I did say, the first one is gonna be a little bit difficult, but once you sort of get the hang of it and get a flow, it'll actually make more sense and you'll get it done efficiently and nicely and it'll all just look really, really nice and very professional. 
As I mentioned before, all of the temperature sensors are not pin dependent on how you wire them, but the map sensors and pressure sensors, and particularly a coil, definitely are. So please refer to the instructions that we give you with every sensor, and you can download each of these quick start guides under each sensor on the website. If you've got another range of connectors that you want us to cover that you're not quite sure about for an upcoming project of your own, leave them in the comments and we'll see what we can do to cover those as well. My name's Dave. Thanks heaps for watching and see you next time. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, smash that like button. We put out a new video every week and sometimes even two. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content.